Hello and welcome to DockerCon. I've been really looking forward to this. It's been a, seems a long time since last year. A lot, lot's been happening. I want to talk about a few things that we, you know, the way we think about technology at Docker, things we've been working on, and uh, even give you a few surprises. Um, first thing I want to talk about really is the principles that we've been working with in our, you know, particularly in our technical area. And I think that there's three, three key things really. It's trust performance and experience are the things I've been thinking about a lot over the last year. Trust is very important. You put your trust in us that Docker will provide secure software, secure images for you, um, and help you with your security um, as well. And this is really, really important concern for us. And everything we do, we think about that. And we've been building a, few, a lot of features around this, and we'll be talking about more about that later. Performance is incredibly important to the developers. You know, you don't want to wait around for things to happen. You just want them to happen immediately as fast as possible. And we've been working a lot on performance and there's there's a lot more interesting things to do. For example, Mac file system performance was something you were complaining about an awful lot last year. Um, and we've been doing a lot of work on that. Um, and we've been seeing really big improvements with the photo IFS work we've been doing and other changes we've been making. And a lot of you have been finding it has really improved your, your use cases. And we will continue to work on performance as you know, over the next, over the coming periods. It's really important we're doing more work on that. Um, and thirdly is experience. Docker has always been a product that, you know, it gives you a magical, easy developer experience over what are really technically complicated subjects. And we really want to continue working on that. It's very important to what we do. And we're investing more in the developer experience and working on that. The sustainable Docker we've been working to build over the, you know, over the last years, you know, is really helping us to ramp up the resourcing we've got on, on these three areas and making our products better for you in all those ways. And we're doing it with you as well. It's very important that, you know, our roadmap is totally open. It's on, on GitHub. You can ask for things. You can give feedback on things. And, you know, all the thing, pretty much everything we've been, we're launching at DockerCon today should not be a surprise to you necessarily. It's been on the public roadmap. Um, we've got a developer preview program, which many of you have given us incredibly important feedback on, uh, on the features. Um, and we've worked, you know, with, you know, for example, with Docker for Linux, Docker Desktop for Linux has been one of the biggest things you were asking for before. You want parity across all the platforms your developers developers work on. You want to be able to switch easily between Mac and Windows and Linux and Raspberry Pi and everything without even having to be think it's any different platform. And um, really excited to ship that. Extensions are also built around you, the community, and your feedback. We've been working with a lot of early access partners to iron things out, make sure everything is working, and you can see the um, things they've managed to build, often in a really short period of time, and there's lots more work to do. Um, and we're really excited about opening up that ecosystem of Docker Desktop into extensions and letting you build things for your organization and for other people to share with other people um you know in the open it's really exciting work um we've been trying to not have docker docker can be full of you know surprises and things you're not expecting we really want to be very transparent in what we're working on when we're working on it and not do kind of conference driven development but there actually was one thing that has just come out of uh, the woodwork just at the last minute. We've been working on this for some time. We weren't sure when it was going to close, so we didn't have time to um, make any announcements before that. But I'm really excited that um, Nesty Box, the company, is joining Docker. And um, you probably haven't heard of Nesty Box or Sysbox, the product they make, perhaps. It's um, not so well known, but we're hoping you'll be as excited as we are by the things that we're going to work on together. And so I'm going to go and talk to the team and let's delve into what Nesty Box is, what they've been working on and why we're really excited by this. So today I'd like to announce that Nesty Box is joining Docker and I'd love to introduce the Nesty Box team to you. Uh, do you want to introduce yourselves? Yes. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Cesar. I am uh, uh, Nesty Box uh, 
uh, co-founder and, and CEO. And uh, I'll let Rodney say hello also. Hi, guys. Rodney, I'm CTO. Um, and so go ahead, sir. Mm -hmm. so, so tell me about how you started Nesty Box, why you started Nesty Box. What was the problem that, really, that you really found fascinating? Yeah. yeah, thank you so much, Justin. And we're also thrilled to be joining Docker. It's uh, super exciting for us. And, um, you know, to answer your question, we started Nesty Boxing back in 2019. We uh, noticed back then that a lot of folks using containers, Docker containers, Kubernetes, were, um, you know, were very successful at running microservices in containers. But um, we felt that um, containers could, number one, use some enhancements to their to the isolation of containers, particularly around the user namespace. It was not easy to use, you know. So we felt like containers could really benefit from having the user namespace made easy and you know to use you know, in a very simple way, right? Um, and that could enhance the isolation of the container and bring many benefits. That was one of the, the things that we felt right away. And number two, we noticed that containers were great at running microservices, but not so much at running what I call system level apps, things like Docker itself or, or, or maybe system D or other applications that normally people use VMs for, right? We felt that containers could normally, you know, should be able to run those and they should be able to run those seamlessly and very securely. We noticed that in order to run those applications in containers, you needed privileged containers, you needed these complicated entry points, um, you know, so the bar was fairly high and very insecure. And that is the problem we've set out to solve, right? We set out to solve the problem of making containers run any workload, um, you know, seamlessly, securely, and with enhanced isolation. I, and yeah, I, it's important to note that privileged containers are not really containers in any kind of terribly meaningful way. You know, they you That's have right. full control of the host if you run a privileged mm -hmm. container, which is that not is right. really That's what right. what what you want. <laughs> that is right. You you are. Inside of the container, you're root with all full capabilities on the host and with access to all of their devices, you know, so an, an entire kernel. So you pretty much it has, it has very little isolation other than a, a file system of, of, of CH root jail around. Other than that, there could be not much more. So when, whenever people needed to run, for example, Docker in containers, and that turns out to be an a increasingly common scenario because people need to run one our containerized Docker itself, because it's very helpful to containerize Docker whenever you want to run CI environments, whenever uh, with containers, whenever you want to do development environments in containers. And so, you know, having telling people, hey, you can only use privileged containers for this. And on top of that, having some complicated entry points and things like that was not uh, a good solution. So we set out to solve that problem. We set out, hey, we have got to have containers that are able to run any software, not just Docker, you know, any software that runs on a bare metal on VM should be able to run a container and it should be able to run it seamlessly and securely and it should be easy for users. Yeah, I remember, um, I think Jerome created Docker in Docker quite early on as a horrible hack. And it, and I think the original version said, this is a horrible hack, don't use it. But people people needed it. And, and I think they, with people testing Kubernetes applications in particular, they, you know, they're running, they need to run a whole Kubernetes environment often to test things. You don't, you don't always need to do that for everything, but increasingly we're finding people who are, who need to do that to run their tests effectively okay. because of the kind of things that they're testing. Yeah. And, and we've noticed that too, when, since we found the Nestle Box in 2019, we were, we weren't, you know, we were quite sure that this would be a valuable addition to the container ecosystem to having you know, we developed what is called a container runtime that would allow containers to do this. And it's, it's called Sysbox and it works below Docker and Kubernetes. It's sort of an alternative to the default runtime called the OCI Run C, right? To the OCI Run C, you know, who, who, um, who has been developed you know, by some amazing engineers and we built on top of that foundation, right? And added some more stuff on it. And since putting that out there, we knew it was going to be available, but we weren't quite sure who was going to use it in what way. And what we found out is exactly, you know, what you just mentioned, people use it a lot in environments um, like CI, different environments, anytime they want to run uh, and something that is not a microservice inside of a container, you know, this becomes valuable. 
And, you know, containers are very powerful at packaging and, and isolating things. And uh, there are great alternatives to VMs in many ways. And, you know, um, so expanding the use cases of containers to work there, that's where um, Sysbox found a lot of uh, traction. Yeah. Research. I mean, we're, we're, I'm really interested in, yeah, in kind of stamping out the privileged container as a kind of concept that people need to run. It's been around for too long. It was, you know, again, it was kind of created as a, as a sort of temporary thing. It wasn't, um, you know, with all these caveats about it not being secure, but people are still, people are still using it because they have these uh, things they want to do that can't, they can't do without it. And, um, and I think it's really important that we, you know, ha you know, help, help, fix these use cases and um yeah. Yeah. and i think again with any user namespaces a thing where like people have tried you know people want to use users namespaces people don't want to run containers as root but it's much as you say it's much more difficult than they would like it to be yeah yeah and, I, and we also found out that you know some of our users are not necessarily people running docker in containers they're people that run microservices but they like the fact that there's a stronger isolation around you know the user namespace um, than in a regular container and they also want to have a true root inside of that container you know a root a powerful root inside of the container but that is not root at the host level and that's what the user namespace gives you right and so making that easy for people it's it's, it's a valuable valuable so what are some of the you know technical problems you had to solve along the yeah. way to to do this yeah so so I'll, I'll, I'll um, let Rodney comment on that. He's our CTO, but I'll, I'll just start by saying that, you know, our motto is, hey, enable containers to run any workload seamlessly and securely. It sounds easy, but in practice, it was actually very challenging, you know, uh, to, to, you know, uh, to extend on what Docker had done and what uh, folks at the other directory had done to extend on, on that, right? So Rodney, maybe you can talk about some of the techniques. Yeah, that the problem that you try to enclose uh, a container or a process within the user space, um, you know, everything everything goes south from that moment on. There are too many applications that require root privileges, and uh, by root I mean true root privileges. And uh, we noticed that the moment that we try to do that, obviously a lot of things broke. So at that time we had to think about how do we emulate all this slash sys and slash proc resources that the application needs for their consumption. And um, yeah, you know, we had to deal with that. Uh, we had to expose those resources. We had to emulate those resources. Uh, so we had a lot of fun doing that. Um, and then eventually, you know, we realized that we need more than that. We need to do, you know, some system um, trapping. And um, you know, we had to intercept certain system calls to uh, do more magic that was required for tricky applications like Kubernetes. We wanted to run Kubernetes within the system container. Um, so yeah, we, we have been having a lot of fun. And many other things that are still in the pipeline. Yeah, and I think the overall the overall um, gist there is that you know um, the containers that Docker initially designed them and the folks out there, you know, they were really designed to run microservices. So they present, you know, uh, inside of the container, the environment is something that you know resembles uh, a Linux host, a very close to Linux host, but it's not fully that. And therefore, microservices run well, but as soon as you put more complex applications, they start breaking, right? And um, with Sysbox, it pushes that boundary further, right? The environment inside of the container really starts resembling that of a bare metal host. And as a result, it, all of these applications start running. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even, it, but even with microservices, I mean, I think it, there's been a long, long periods of things like uh, applications not understanding how many actual CPU cores they should work with because exactly. the, the proc CPU info doesn't correspond to the virtual exactly. cores that they've got. And so, and the memory memory they've got doesn't correspond to C groups. And there's been some work on getting, you know, things like the Java runtime to understand C group configs and things like that. But uh, most applications still just kind of look at proc and sys and see what the what the host looks like, what they think the yeah. host looks like, and not exactly. and not really the the emulated environment. Yeah, exactly, and that's exactly the path that Sysbox is on, right? It is on that path, and as Rodney was just saying, we you know Sysbox emulates portions of procfs and, and sysfs inside of that container, such that things like you know CPU info, main info, all that information now starts matching with the resources assigned to the container, right? And um, you know, we, 
we are on the way there. We're not yet there. It's a still a work in progress, although we've done significant progress in the, in the last few years. But we actually are very excited about joining Docker that, you know, leveraging Docker's resources, leveraging the amazing community that you guys uh, have built. Yeah. You know, this acceleration will, will really um, uh, take off and, and we will see even further improvements over the next uh, year or so into the containers and systems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. We're really excited as well. It was, you know, it's been it's been really nice working with you, and we're looking forward to spending more time together. Work, you know, solving solving difficult problems in the container space. Um, it's it's, it's right. good fun. That's right. Yeah, yeah, and and in the end, it's all about making it easier for application developers, for DevOps teams, to use containers. Right. That's what it's it's all about. You know, and you know, easy and secure. Right. They shouldn't really have to think too much about you know um, those things, right? And that's our goal. You know, yeah. the runtime is taking care of all of that stuff for them. Yeah, right now you have to think too much about security. You have to understand how the security works a lot of the time and understand which things are not safe and which things are safe. And you know, one of the things we're interested in, you know, working on you with is is making those lines much clearer, making it absolutely clear that you know. It, you know you can configure things to be run safely for example in in your development environment docker desktop that you can safely run containers without with with stronger guarantees around isolation and how they're running exactly um, yeah. Yeah. many other use cases too exactly exactly i think this is going to um like we just said enhance you know the security posture of docker containers and enable them to run more workloads in a seamless way, right? And that's going to expand the use cases for them. And that can only be beneficial to users. Absolutely. I'm not, you know, there are there are many, many more use cases coming along, lots of things that people want to do, people are trying to do, things that are too too difficult to do now. And it's okay. going to be great working yeah. working with you to make them easier. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. And, and like I said, well, we're, we're really thrilled to to, to be joining uh, Docker and you know tapping into your, your amazing community uh, to get even more ideas and, and you know continue to improve, to improve the product. Well, welcome to Docker. All right, thank you. <laughs> so it's incredibly exciting to have Nesty Box joining Docker, and we're going to be talking a lot more about the um, the work we're going to do together um, with the open source code and all the things that we're going to be working on. Um, and how it's going to ship and all those things. So there'll be a lot, a lot more to talk about with that soon. And um, it'd be really exciting, really, really happy that they're joining us. Um, so thank you for listening. Um, welcome to DockerCon. Have a really great time. I'm so looking forward to it and all the exciting talks and all the stuff that's going on. And um, looking forward to all the things that we're going to work on with you over the next year and all the amazing stuff we're going to deliver. Don't forget, Docker is hiring. We um, so please come and uh, you know we have a lot of roles open, all sorts of roles across engineering, support, marketing, sales, everything. So do apply if you'd like to come and work with us on all these exciting things. Um, thank you. <laughs>